they are very similar to the uh, issues in the third world. We are on the states as Asia and Africa nations, very poor nations. And the thinking has not changed uh, as fast as it should have been, because we got rich and industrialized 50 to 70 years later than the others, the other nations. So we are on the same stage as the Americans 50 years ago, as the Norwegians uh, 30 years ago, and we are in thinking on the same stage as a poor African nation. We survived in this country for a thousand years, for each day, because if you had a fish, you had to take, catch it now. If you had a bird, you had to catch it now, not tomorrow. If you had to gather the hay, you had to do it today because it would be raining tomorrow. And people were starving, dying. There were huge volcanic eruptions, floods, and very cold climate, colder and colder. So when we suddenly, after a thousand years of this thinking, jumped into industrialization and became one of the richest people in the world, we were still thinking like it was, you know, imperative to take the money and run. To take the money and run. And that is our problem. Because in this book we have 100 wonders of the world, 40 are uh, natural wonders, you know, it's a man-made, uh, the Chinese wall, the Stonehenge, uh, Kremlin, the Statue of Liberty, but if you look this up, it's 40 natural wonders, just seven in Europe, just two in Nordic countries, and if you look it up, what is here? Great Fjords of Norway. Here. Volcanic Iceland. And the first sentence is, Iceland is a land like no other. Look all the book, book up and you see no sentence like this anywhere. Look up North America and you see Yellowstone? No, it isn't here. Why? Yellowstone doesn't qualify. The the, the, the uh, volcanic part of Iceland is much more worth than Yellowstone. There was a specialist in uh, harnessing the geothermal energy here, and he said, we are harnessing all the geothermal energy all over the United States, and showed us uh, a card. Here, 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 here. This red spot is more than all the others combined. It's Yellowstone, it's sacred earth, we won't touch it. Even 100,000 square kilometers out of Yellowstone are not touched. So I want us Icelanders to just think about what were they thinking in America 50 years ago, 130 years ago when they decided Yellowstone would, would never be touched. We are on the same stage as the, as the as arguments were then. And we must learn from other nations. Because if we carry on like this, Icelandic nature, which is unique in the world, it has unparalleled uh, interaction between fire and ice, and many other wonders that are nowhere to be found, we have to stop before it's all destroyed for aluminium smelters that take all the profit away, like in the African countries. The problem is that the money that comes from building factories, power plants, comes immediately. The moment they sign the contract, the money begins to flow. If you decide not to do this, but to uh, preserve nature and make Iceland a more uh, valuable tourist country, it takes five years, ten years. And people always, when standing and looking at their wallet and saying, either I take the money now and run, or I get some money after some years. 
There it goes. Really? What are we facing now in Iceland? About 100 projects of power plants. There are already more than 30. So we are facing a country with 130 big power plants. We have to uh, make a priority. And our priority is now the highlands. Because the next step they are going to take is to make power plants in the highlands and uh, electrical lines all over the highlands. That is our main uh, task now. So the battle here in this uh, lava last autumn was on my behalf a sign that now we will have to get harder. It is not enough to protest and have some rally uh, through Reykjavik. I thought that 15,000 people rally through Reykjavik in protest of Karl Nuker protest would change something. It didn't change anything. It was silenced. In the media, in other countries, there was no word about the biggest rally in Iceland. Because the power is everywhere. The connections are everywhere. They even could silence that down. After that, we'll have to do something more drastic because otherwise we will lose everything. Simply that it's so uneven battle. Uh, those who uh, carry on this uh, uh, endless uh, uh, destruction of Iceland and Asia, they have uh, power and money. It's the same thing. Money gives you power and uh, vice versa. They control the politics, politics and they control the ma media. So it's so uneven. But they even managed to put us in a bad light. I was here because I have retired. I could be here any day in for one month. They call me a professional protester. Just like I was making a lot of money. But the guys who control it they have big salaries. Nobody has called them professional, uh, what should I say, uh, What is the, what is the, you know, you have a, a, a protest and what? And who, this who is recommending, what is he? A recommender. Recommenders? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, we found it. <laughs> you know, these in power have even managed to uh, control the vocabulary about this, the words. So they call us, who are against this, uh, professional protesters. I was sitting here for one month and didn't get a krona for it. I spent money to do it. But the big chiefs that are, are controlling this, they have a huge salary. They are, of course, uh, professional recommenders, but that word is not used in Iceland because they control the usage of words. Like in 1984, Orwell's 1984. Really? 50 years ago we were underdeveloped. 96% of our export was fish. We had no roads. We had gravel roads and tracks all over the country. We had earned money in the, in the war, but we needed something better. And then came the offer, let us build aluminium smelter at Strömsvik, and you can uh, harness uh, the Thjorsá river. Big uh, power plant, big factory, and also a lot of industry uh, behind the uh, aluminium factory. You know, uh, building uh, many, many, many goods out of uh, we even thought of, of a car factory here, building aluminium cars, you know, nothing of it came, nothing. Of course, 
It all goes up to, to the other countries. And this has been a religion for us. We believe in con very much consuming energy. Aluminium factory uses ten times more energy than an iron smelter. And we are just looking for as much uh, energy to sell as possible for the lowest price possible. We even, the Icelandic authorities sent to uh, the aluminium uh, companies in the world a booklet stating lowest energy prices, very flexible uh, environmental impact assessment. And it all went that way. They transport the, the aluminium uh, from abroad to Iceland and also all the way from Australia. Then they need a huge energy to uh, smelt it and uh, export it again. So you see, in order to make it this uh, very, very uh, complicated way, you have to offer the lowest energy prices because this is a very expensive process. It's not going to good for the Australians. Many people think it's very much profit for everyone to have as many aluminium smelters as possible and harness all the energy in this country and destroy all the nature. But when you look at the numbers, even if you had six aluminium smelters producing three million tons a year. Only about two percent of the uh, labor would have, uh, would be in, in, in the aluminium smelters. Ninety-eight percent would have to do something else. That's all. The benefit lies in mostly in contractors. Contractors all over the world are very powerful. They bring in the bulldozers and all the equipment to uh, uh, harness the rivers, harness the uh, geothermal uh, energy, and they have a lot of influence on the politicians. As an example, the guy who was first uh, a financial minister and then the chief of Landsvirkjun, the Icelandic power company, he came to power through the aluminium smelter in Stumfvik. They supported him in elections in Reykjavik, so he was elected. So of course, you know, the dog doesn't bite the hand that feeds him. Really? You know, I was, I was for it for the first decades. But after it became much more energy harnessed than we needed ourselves, and there was no industry behind, there was no industry, there were no factories here producing something from aluminium. I realized that this was wrong and I went, in 1988 and 1999, I went to 25 uh, national parks and 18 power plants and dams and reservoirs in North America and Europe. And then I got the shock. We are on a completely wrong track. We are, it's, it, it's horrible. It was a complete shock. Me and my wife, we discussed about uh, moving to Australia from this island. But after thinking about it, I found that it was, this was cowardice. So instead, I, I chose to uh, take, the, take the battle. It's remarkable that sometimes the majority are being against this uh, uh, heavy industry. But always when it comes to the point that you are facing a wallet full of money now, then you think, take the money and run. The, those in power who have the power and the money find always ways to get their will. That is the sad thing. So we have to carry on our battle. That 
í síðustu að já hérði ég glemt að segja um hálendið ok ok it's a winterness but i will I was, for example the majority was a yes, yes for example three years ago the majority was for a huge national park in the highlands today it's even next year that they will begin to put that power line down there and two power plants and i'm afraid it they can't do it because they will offer the people some money now not tomorrow and if you see the money in the wallet if you said yesterday i don't need this money today you see it here you can grab it and keep it take the money and run sorry Hello?